Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be doing a Lightroom color grade and we're going to be taking you through how to edit like the Instagrammer Marla Catherine. Um, so this is the photo we're going to be basing our edits off today. So go ahead, check her out on Instagram. She has loads of awesome cool photos. Um, and I really went through her feed and I spent several hours just kind of working out what she specifically does to her edits um, and what sort of things I can kind of take from that and put together. So what I've done is I went ahead and I made a preset pack of about 12 presets. They will be up on the website www.mattandseb.com. The link will be the top link in the description if you want to go ahead and get the sort of film look Marla Catherine style preset pack. Um, that will be down there along with a load of other presets and offers on the website for the next few days. Before we get started, I want to say a massive thank you to Wondershare for sponsoring this video. Um, you can go ahead and check out all the information about them down below. There will be links to their Facebook page and their website and everything down below. But I just wanted to mention from them to you guys today, they have an event coming up up till Christmas. I think it's up till the 24th of December. You can win prizes anywhere from $5 gift cards all the way up to $200 Amazon gift cards and also an iPad Pro. Uh, and there is apparently a 100% win rate. So what have you got to lose? Go ahead, check out their Facebook page. Uh, but thank you so much for Wondershare for sponsoring this video. Let's get started on today's video. So this is the photo we're going to be editing and we're going to be editing it to look very similar to this photo here. Um, see the reason we've chosen this is because there's lots of blues in this image, lots of blues in this image um, and we're going to be going for that sort of bluey green sort of vibe today. Okay so I'm going to show you some of the examples of some of the presets in action. Um, now this is the first one, basically what I've done here is I've gone for the, the very green film look. She has some of these photos a lot further down in her feed um, so I've gone ahead and I've gone through her feed and I've sort of made presets specific to very specific parts of her um, photos. So this one is the sort of green film look. There will be a couple like this in the back and you can see what it looked like before and the after. Um, this one isn't the best sort of photo. I'm going to try and find a better photo to demonstrate it but this is the more autumnal one. Uh, there's a few more of these ones in the preset pack. Um, but basically it looks like this before and this after. It kind of makes the sort of oranges more reddy orange and sort of sort of teal and orange very slightly. Uh, this one is again the very autumnal look but I've gone for the sort of green undertones. You can see, go check out her Instagram page. Lots of her photos have a lot of green undertones and that's what these presets do. So this one you can see what it looks like before and the after and again for this one it does the same thing but again all of the presets do incorporate that film look by introducing lots of grain into the image. I'm going to show you how to do that today in today's tutorial but that's before and that's the after. And there's one more here you can see what it looked like before and after the presets. So, so without any further ado let's jump straight into the computer. We're going to have a look at today's photo. We're going to edit it and I'm going to take you through all the reasons why we do all the steps that we do. So this may be a fairly long video but hopefully you get a lot of value out of this video. So first of all we're going to come into the basics panel um, and what we're going to do is we're going to try and warm up the image and make it slightly greener. If you look at this photo here it's not a particularly cold image. There are lots of blues in this image but the underlying tones are a kind of warm colour. If you look at the sort of highlights, specifically if you look at the highlights in the hair, the whites of her eyes and also on the denim jacket, you can really see, if that was blue, if you, she'd like sort of decrease the temperature to make it blue, you'd really be able to see that whereas here you can sort of see the white flecks are slightly yellowy orange. So what we're going to do is come to the slider here and I'm going to put mine up to 9444 Kelvin. That number will not be specific for everyone. Uh, that will change depending on your photo and the environment you took the photo in. That seems to work for this image. I've done this edit a couple of times just to kind of perfect the look for this color grade. Um, Second thing that we're going to do is get the tint slider and we're really just going to decrease it just very slightly, maybe minus three, minus five being the maximum just to add some more greens into the image. Her, for actually her, a lot of her photos do have a lot of greens in the highlights and shadows, a very sort of green uh, undertone to all of her photos. So that's where we kind of introducing the first flex of green in the image today. Now the next thing we're going to do is if we really look closely into her image, she does have a lot of contrast in the image. Um, at the same time, she has lots of details in the shadows. So we're going to come to the contrast here and we're going to just increase the contrast to 15 and that just sort of really kind of brings out the clarity of the image a little bit more. Then what we're going to do is we're going to drop the um, highlight slider all the way down to about minus 30, just a really long way down. You can see here her highlights really aren't overblown and if there were clouds in the sky, there would be a lot of detail there. So that's what you can do. You can also drop that further if you want, depending on your image. Um, there aren't many highlights to save in this image here, so I can't really drop it too much but that depends really on your image. Now we're going to work on the shadows. Like I said she has a lot of contrast but there are a lot of details in her shadows. The way that's achieved is by getting this shadow slider and all we're doing is 
increasing the shadow slider so what that does is brighten up the shadows and bring out any detail that is left in the shadows now don't do it all the way because that can make the image look very very bright and it can also introduce noise into your image so probably anywhere from plus 30 to 40 is a good starting point then we're going to work on the whites and blacks here we're going to introduce some more contrast we're going to crush the blacks ever so slightly um, and what that's going to do is introduce some more contrast but at the same time because we introduced uh, we increased the shadows we are keeping the detail in the shadows so the whites we're going to increase to plus 28 and the shadows sorry the whites we're going to increase to 28 and the blacks we're going to decrease to minus 33 and that's a good point to leave it at there um, finally what I want to do in the basics panel is I'm just going to introduce some clarity now for those of you who don't know clarity I like to think of it being a sort of sharpness slash contrast slider if I increase the clarity to there what it does it just makes the image very very sharp but at the same time it makes it very very contrasty so you don't want too much clarity but in this case of the image we're going to go for somewhere around six just to kind of boost that contrast a little bit more uh, finally, the vibrance and saturation. I've had a lot of questions of people asking what's the difference between vibrance and saturation, and maybe I'll get around to doing a video on that specifically later on. But basically, uh, saturation, if I increase to 100%, it kind of is a slightly more uneven version of vibrance, is the way I like to think of it. Vibrance increases the, the, the amount of each color in the image over the whole image, whereas saturation kind of makes it look a little bit weird. So what I like to do is mostly work on vibrance, but in this case, we're gonna be dropping the vibrance to minus 13, just to kind of take out some of those colors, because if you look at her images here, um, and all the way through, none of them are particularly vibrant. Her skin tone's fairly vibrant, but everything else is kind of quite desaturated, like here, for example. That's what we're gonna be working on when we're editing this image here. Okay, so that's it for the basic slider. Next, we're going to move on to the tone curve. Now, you may have a tone curve that looks like this, I think the best thing to do is come onto this tone curve here. Uh, very simply, in today's edit, we're gonna be using an S curve. Now, for those of you who haven't watched past our videos, first of all, subscribe, it'd be awesome to see you around the channel some more. Um, and secondly, the tone curve really is a great way of editing your image and really, really focusing on the color grade. Um, so here, we're gonna be using an S curve and that basically introduces some contrast into the image. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. So we're just gonna drag up the highlights. We're gonna put one point in the middle just to keep the middle very sort of central. And then we're gonna drop the shadows ever so slightly like that. We're not introducing too much because we've already spent a long time in the basics panel introducing some contrast into the image. So that's probably a good amount there. Now I may come back to the tone curve at the end for some useful pointers on how to use film color grades. So make sure to stick around till then to see those sort of bonus features at the end of the video. But for now, that's what we're gonna do with the tone curve. Okay, for the HSL slider, for those of you who also don't know, um, hue, saturation, and luminance are the three main important things, really, I think, with color grading. Hues will basically change each color, so specifically you can make sort of blues very green, you can make oranges sort of much more red, things like that uh, are what the hues do. Saturation, obviously, is how much of each individual color, and luminance is the brightness of each individual color. Um, so in this image, we're mainly going to be focusing around the blues for the hue, saturation, and luminance. One thing I really want to point out, and I point out at the beginning of lots of videos, is don't really mess around too much with the orange slider. The orange slider is mainly, you'll see here, the skin tone. Uh, if I drop the skin tone too much or increase it, she can either look like Shrek or just look really, really sunburned. Um, so the best thing to do is kind of leave the orange slider near enough the media, middle, I like to go plus or minus 10, it's probably a good, safe region. Um, the reds being very similar as well, kind of does sort of affect her skin tone, but mostly her lips in this image here. So we're gonna be just increasing the red side to plus eight today, uh, and the orange side are just down to minus 11, and that's just gonna make everything sort of more autumnal. It's gonna be sort of making everything a slightly bit more orange. Uh, the yellows, again, to minus five. Um, that's really not gonna to do too much in this image. You can see if I press the backslash key, the before and after, um, this is what we've got so far in the color grade. Um, a really nice effect coming on here with the lighting. So now we're gonna move on to the greens. We're gonna leave it at zero, but the aquas and the blues is really where we're gonna be taking uh, a lot of time thinking about. Now, if you look at her images, her blues aren't like a specific natural blue. Her blues are slightly, sorry, a very slightly uh, teal color. Um, now, if you wanna make a teal color, there are two things you can do. One, you can just drop the blue side, and there you go, you have your teal color. Problem with that is, obviously that's very unnatural and doesn't look anything like this. What I tend to do is I put that back to zero um, and I tend to increase the aqua slider to plus 30, plus 40. And what that tends to do is whatever I now do to the blue slider, i.e. I'm gonna drag it to the left, what the aqua slider dragging to the right does is kind of counter 
too, like going too far with the blues. Uh, and you'll see what I mean now. So if I drag the blues down to minus 27, minus 30, somewhere around there, um, if I then put the aquas back to zero, and it's hard to see, but if I then drop the aquas as well, you can see what's going on with the C here. It kind of goes incredibly green. So we're going to leave the aquas where I left them just to start off with. As for the purples, we're going to leave alone, and the magentas also don't touch because there are none of those colors in this image, and it doesn't really make much difference. Okay, so this is where the kind of fun part happens, really, with the saturation. You can kind of really mess around with what the the image is going to is going to do now. Um, like I said at the beginning, a very desaturated image. Um, so the way we're going to do that today is we're going to come and we're going to decrease the yellows, we're going to decrease the greens, the blues uh, are mostly the colors we're going to decrease. Everything else probably going to leave roughly about the same. If anything, we're going to try and boost the oranges just because she's got a very warm skin tone here. Um, so I'm going to show you how you do that now. First of all, the reds we're going to drop down to about minus 15. And this is kind of like a um, negating the effect of the orange by a little bit. Uh, you'll see what I mean now. But now what we're going to do is come to the oranges and we're literally going to increase that to plus 45 and already you see we have a very warm skin tone. Um, if I left the reds at zero um, it kind of can go over the top with the skin tone. In this case um, it's not too much of an effect but using this preset with lots of other images I found that reducing the reds a bit as well did help. Um, so now what we're going to do is come to the yellows and we're going to massively knock back the yellows down to about minus 46. So you can see there I put that back to zero and then back to where it was supposed to be minus 46, minus 60, somewhere around there. Um, you can really see the effect it has on the greens in the backgrounds. Yellows can really affect greens on your image. A lot of the time people think, oh, I just want to change the um, I just want to change the greens in my image. I'm only going to affect the green slider. Yellow slider has a massive effect on the greens in your image. So just take that into note. Um, doesn't mean to say the green slider doesn't have an effect. Obviously it does. So today we're going to be getting the green slider and we're going to be dropping that even further all the way down to minus 70. Um, and that's really just knocking out a lot of these greens in this image. And it's going to be technically if you had like forest in the background, um, your greens would probably look a lot closer to this color here. Um, at least that's what it did for me when I used this preset on a couple of other images. Um, now we're going to be coming to the aquas and again if you look at the sort of colour on her jacket the blues are by no means saturated so again we're going to be just taking the aqua slider down to minus 40 just reducing the saturation in the blues here and then the blue slider we're going to be reducing it down to minus 48 which really kind of desaturates the sea. Um, purple and magenta I just in in this case I just I'm going to drop those to minus 28 and minus 37. I mean these numbers, I are, I've tested these numbers, I know they work for this specific colour grid for a few images which is where I'm getting these numbers from but ideally what you want to be doing is getting your yellows, greens, aquas and blues and dropping the saturation of those until you kind of get the desired look. Uh, you don't have to use these exact numbers. Uh, purples and magentas um, are that if there are any traces of those colours I don't want them in my image hence the fact I've just reduced them there. Okay, finally we're going to be coming on to the luminance, and like I said at the beginning, luminance is just the brightness of each individual colour. So we're going to get the reds, and we're really just going to sort of brighten up her lips a bit. Plus 35 is probably enough, you don't want to go too far, otherwise it kind of looks a little bit weird, so we'll leave it at plus 35. Uh, the oranges, because I want to kind of keep some of the uh, colour in her face, if I drop the, color, the luminance in the oranges, you can see it kind of brings back some of the detail, so minus 30 is a good bet there. As for the yellows, we just want to bring out some of the yellows a little bit more, some highlights in the yellows, I think tends to give a nice look and it kind of brings out the little highlights of the bushes in the background as well. So yellows increase ever so slightly, greens, we're just going to decrease those and it just puts some more contrast into sort of like the foliage and greens in the background. That's why I tend to do that with the luminance cider. Okay, as for the aquas and blues, we can leave the aquas alone. Blues, we're just going to drop off to about minus 19, minus 20. And you could, if you wanted to, just sort of add some sort of contrast slash highlights to the aquas as well. Doesn't make too much of an effect in this image. Uh, purpose and magentas leave at zero. Um, finally, well, finally, we're now coming on to the split toning. Um, also, split toning is one of those things that's also neglected an awful lot by people who do color grades. Uh, I tend to find it, it's kind of hard to get the knack of it sometimes, but basically what it will do is if you press Option or Alt on your keyboard and you just drag this slider along, it's gonna add that specific color to your highlights or your shadows um, and then what you can do is just adjust that amount using the saturation slider. So if we look at her images she has a sort of purpley blues slash I don't know lilac colour in her highlights there. The way I like to really work out how people colour grade their photos is I like to look at the highlights and compare it to the white on Instagram and I just kind of get an idea. So that's what we get.
that's what we're going to do. We're going to come to the highlights and we're going to put it on 199, which is a kind of nice blue color, that color there. Um, and we're going to put the saturation slider probably up to about 10. That's just going to add in some of those blues, some of those greens into the image that we expected right at the beginning. Uh, for the shadows, we're going to be adding some sort of purpley colors. I think if you look at the blacks of her shirt, 289 is a good place to start for that, is what I thought. So that's that sort of color there. And for that, we're going to be going for only about six in the uh, saturation. Now, if I press the before and after, that's what this image looked like before, all the color grade, and this is what it looks like now. Um, so I'm going to close the split turning now, and finally, we're going to come on to the last thing. Um, really, if you want to be going for these sort of film looks, you want to be adding some sort of grain into your images. Um, the grain, I'm just going to add to 55. Now, the grain amount will massively depend on the size of your image, the, amount of the resolution of your image. Um, so really, with these presets, if you do get go ahead and buy the presets down below, uh, link in the description like I mentioned at the beginning, um, you will probably want to mess around with the grain and size ever so slightly. But 55 and 25 work well for me. Okay, that is it for the color grade. I'm just going to show you the before and the after. That's the kind of effect we're getting in today's video. Um, I kind of really like this look. I think it looks quite cool. I really like the sort of film look you can get from these color grades and that what this preset pack does. Mostly it's a sort of film look preset pack. You could, if you want to do, to go for sort of like an old film style Instagram theme, these presets are perfect for you. Uh, they also work as well in conjunction with her sort of color grade. That's the sort of style she follows as well. Um, so. That's it for today's video. I did mention at the beginning, if you stay to the end, I'm gonna give you some bonus information. So that's it, the tone curve, get braced. This is what's gonna to happen. Tone curve, you can basically just spend a lot of time on the RGB, leave it there and run away from it and never look at it again. Um, now, one thing that's nice to do with the tone curve, if you're doing a film look photos, is you can add some fade into your images. And what that will do, if you drag up here, you can add that sort of grayed out blacks into the image. And I really like that effect. I really like the look that gives to the images. Um, you don't have to do that, but it's just an idea. and You can mess around with that if you want. Now, the bonus feature is you can also come into the red, green, and blue channels and adjust those. Um, this is gonna make the image look very different, um, a lot more contrasty, but it's also gonna give it that kind of uh, almost cross-process look that you get with your film photos. Um, so coming into the red channel, we're just gonna be creating a very small S curve. So increase the highlights in the red, drop the, high, uh, the shadows in the reds like that, maybe add some more reds. I'm gonna do this very quickly. Uh, and some of the presets have this pre-done, uh, I've gone ahead and done this in some of the presets in the preset pack, so you can go ahead and see what I've done for those specific ones. But more or less, it's just a simple S curve. Uh, and halfway through, you can begin to see the effect it's having. Um, and then you just add some blues and what you can do is you can say oh maybe I want more blues in the image maybe I want more greens so drop off maybe the greens in the shadow the blues in the shadows and we'll kind of get more greens so if I turn it off now this is the tone curve uh, not having the tone curve and this is adding in that cross-processed tone curve i.e. adding s curves in all of the, each individual channels like I said introducing a lot of contrast into the photo um, and also kind of that very sort of um, cross-processed contrasty look. So I hope this video was useful. That film look we can kind of really achieve by spending a lot of time on the tone curve and also adding greens to our images. If you want to see any more videos like this, any more really in-depth videos, this video so far is 20 minutes long. I'm going to try and cut it down a little bit. I hope there's lots of information packed into this, uh, but we'll see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.